Hello and welcome to your first lesson for the Vital Shoulder Complex course. My name is John Gibbons and I will be your tutor throughout this course. So we're going to start with the first lesson which is on functional anatomy of the shoulder joint. Now, anatomy to me is one of the most important lessons you will learn. Throughout this course there are 18 lessons but I think you should spend a bit more time um, on lesson one and two. So this one's more about the bones and the ligaments and then lesson two will be on muscles and motion. Okay, so don't rush through them. Yeah, spend time, go back, look through, revisit yeah, before you do your assessment um, and hopefully a lot of it will then stick in. So let's move on to this. You've already got this uh, text because you should have already downloaded it as part of the course. So it might be an idea to go through some of the things as I explain. Now I'm going to use a, a pen here. I'm going to use a, a red dot. So we'll start with osteology. Okay. So we start with the, the study of the bones and when we will look at the scapula. Now so look at uh, this to start with. So we've got angles. So we've got three angles. We've got the lateral angle we've got the superior angle, and then we've got the inferior angle. So this area here, so the lateral angle, all right, is basically where the, the glenoid fossa is here. So this is the socket, uh, and actually the humeral head will fit along here. So that'll be known as the lateral angle. So this will be the superior angle, and then this is where the main insertion point will be for the levator scapulae, okay? Almost like around this sort of area in here. And then we've got the inferior angle, okay, along here. And then the inferior angle, part of the latissimus dorsi will cross over this area, okay. Um, let's move on to the borders. So we've got three borders. We can use this one as part of that. So this is the medial border along here. The medial border, or it's known as the, the vertebral border. And then this is where the main muscles of the rhomboids minor and major will attach. We've got the lateral border on the side, also known as the auxiliary border. And we've got the teres minor, yeah, part of the attachment along here. And also there's a small area just inferior to the glenoid fossa, which we look at this one. You can see this area here, so it's called the infraglenoid tubercle. And then that will be where the tricep long head attaches. Okay, so this would be the auxiliary border coming down. Yeah, and then this is naturally the, the medial border coming up here. Okay, and where these two borders meet will be the inferior angle. Now, if you're looking at this one, you can see the superior border is along here. Okay, so that's the superior border. This depression would be known as the supraspinous fossa. Okay, so the supraspinous fossa within here, and you probably guess what muscle sits in there, and that would be the supraspinatus. As part of the superior border, we've got this area called the suprascapular notch, and then there is a superior transverse ligament across here, the space between them, okay, where the ligament goes like that, there's a tiny little foramen underneath, and that's where the suprascapular nerve, which comes from C5 and C6, and suprascapula will supply the supraspinatus and also the infraspinatus. And infraspinatus will be located within this infraspinous fossa here. So you can see that, okay, so the infraspinous fossa. Okay, so we've got the uh, spine of the scapula. So this area, the spine of the scapula, along here is like a ridge along there, and above it will be supraspine, and below it will be the infraspine. Part of the trapezius muscle will come onto this. And then we've got the acromion, and if you go to the end, okay, this is the acromion here, that bit, and then the edge, which I'll do in a second, so this edge will be the acromion process. Okay, you can see it here, so this is the acromion along here. Okay, and then this space underneath, so that space will be the subacromial space, um, and that's where the supraspinatus and the uh, 
um, subacromial bursa could get caught. It's roughly about 8 to 12 millimeters, yeah, the distance within that subacromial space. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Let's uh, come out of that. Let's done. And let's move on. Let's go back to the pen. So again, we'll do the red one. Uh, and again, we've got the coracoid process is next. So the coracoid. So this is the coracoid process here, just there. In fact, I'll probably ease it. If I go back a page, um, and let's go back to the pen. There we go. So you can see the coracoid process just here. And then that's the coracoid, like a beak-like projection, that bit. And there are three muscles attachment to this bony projection. One of them is called, similar name, coracobrachialis. The biceps short end will attach and also the pectoralis minor will insert as well. Okay, let's move on. Let's go back to the pen. Uh, have a look at the humerus. Now, the humerus, you can see there is the head and the head of the humerus, where it sits within the glenoid fossa in here, okay, where, where that bit, it's almost like sits in that bit. It's almost like saying the golf ball is on a tee. And think about how much contact where the head has to the small tee is quite minimal. Okay, that's why the shoulder is relatively uh, unstable um, because it sacrifices uh, stability for mobility. We've got two necks, okay, you've got one neck here called the anatomical neck, okay, the anatomical neck, and then we've got another neck called the surgical neck. So the surgical neck goes around, you can see here, and then the anatomical neck is located just behind the head of the humerus. And then this is where you can see the greater tubercle is here. The greater tubercle is where the supraspinatus will attach. The lesser tubercle will be where the um, subscapularis will attach. And then you can see this word called the intertubercular sulcus here, excuse my drawing. Uh, and then that area, which is along here, okay. The word inter means between the tubercles. So between the lesser and the greater tubercle, there is that space, okay, and it's called a sulcus. The typical name is called uh, the bicipital groove because the long head of biceps will come up through that and go to the supraglenoid tubercle, like that. And the short head will go to the coracoid process. Halfway down the humerus, we've got the deltoid tuberosity here. So that's like a tubercle where the main muscle of the deltoid will attach. And along here, we've got the lateral supracondylar ridge, like the brachial radialis will come down. The lateral epicondyle, which is there, which it will be known as a tennis elbow, the medial Epicondyl will be known as a uh, golfer's elbow or medial epicondylitis. Okay, and then these two capitular metatrochlea is part of the humerus with the coronoid fossa located here. The olecranon process on this side will be where the main triceps will come in. Uh, so the free heads will come on to that sort of area. And the radial groove is part where the, uh, the radial nerve will come down through that. Uh, the clavicle, there's not much to really to say. We have the acromial end, which is the acromioclavicular joint. The SC end, the sternoclavicular joint in here. We have a few areas. This is called the conoid tubercle. Uh, basically, that is a ligament called the trapezoid and conoid, which are part of the uh, coracoclavicular ligaments. So there's two parts, and then they will attach to that. And there's a little groove for subclavius on here. Um, and the subclavius is a muscle for depression of the uh, clavicle. Okay, arthrology, some of the joints. So we've got four main joints associated to the shoulder complex. Naturally, everybody knows the shoulder joint, and the shoulder joint medically is called the glenohumeral joint, okay, which is a typical ball and socket joint in here. We've got the sternoclavicular joint along here. So the, the SC joint will be within a sort of area. And then when the shoulder elevates, so when the shoulder goes up, then the SC joint will go down. Okay, so then that will go down as this one will go up. And the AC joint, which is here. Okay, so that's the acromioclavicular joint. 
It's one of the main joints to suffer with arthritic changes to this area. And we also got something called the scapular thoracic articulation, which is not true to say it's a joint. It's where the scapula here, where the scapula okay, sits, sits on the rib cage, excuse my drawing again, and it sits on the, the rib cage and is almost like in suspension. So it's not a true joint in the operative word. It is basically a suspension where the scapula is suspended around the, the thorax. Okay, so there's the four joints and naturally all these joints are interrelated for when you abduct the shoulder sort of motion in here. Okay, and then have a look at this one. And this one includes the bursa along there. So we've got the subdeltoid bursa fused with a subacromial bursa, okay, around there. So the bursa is naturally that blue part there and you can see it here on this one. So this is the whole bursa, all that blue. Okay, there's many of the sub uh, acromial bursa uh, merging with the subdeltoid. Some of these areas we've got the rotator cuff muscles, we've got the teres minor sitting here, we've got the infraspinatus sitting there, we've got the supraspinatus sitting here, okay, and then we've got the subscapularis sitting there. So these will be known as the sits muscles along here. Uh, and then you've got some ligaments, um, we've got the so think of the name of the ligaments. Okay, this is the coracoid process. This is the acromion. So we've got a ligament called the coracoacromial ligament coming down here. Okay, so the coracoacromial ligament. So this is the coracohumeral here yeah, coming down from there. On this side, if you look at, we've got the coracoacromial ligament again here. You can see it there. And uh, we've got the capsule ligaments along this area in here. And these would be known as the superior, uh, middle and inferior bands of the glenohumeral ligament because they're known as extra capsula. And then you've got the coracoclavicular ligaments. And then remember I said earlier, so they would be known as the trapezoid and the conoid. So you've got the trapezoid component here, and then you've got the conoid component, which is part of the coracoacromial. Okay, let's move on to the last bit. Come on, there we go. Let's go back to the pen. Okay, um, yeah, so you can see some of the, the ligaments in here. Okay, so I mentioned earlier the trapezoid and the conoid, which is part of the coracoclavicular ligaments here. You can see the long head of biceps now, yeah, coming up through that and it goes right through. So it invaginates the joint and it's underneath a ligament. You can't see it, a ligament would come across here. Okay, so it almost like fill that sort of space a little bit higher there. That's okay for now. So it's called the transverse humor ligament. So it goes across and keeps that long head of biceps in position. Okay, that's the majority of the ligaments done. Let's move on to this side. Now the last part, so we've got scapular thoracic motion. Uh, OZA 2012 talks about 12 motions, okay, with the scapula. Uh, most of us know that the scapula is able to elevate, depress, protract, retract, but also is capable of upward motion yeah, and downward motion, or downward rotation and upward rotation. It's also able to tilt, okay, and also rotate, and a few other things that you can read about in here. But what I want to discuss is this position here. You can see the sagittal plane here, okay, okay, and then you've got the, the frontal plane coming across that area. And in between, we've got something called the scapular plane, which is also known as scapture, okay, and is roughly around 30 degrees. So this would be the most comfortable position for the arm if you have pathology within the shoulder. You can see the 30 degrees here. Okay, so in between the sagittal and the frontal plane would be known as the scapular plane. The last part, so we've got some movements like I said. You can see here, so the scapula if it's going this way will be upward rotation and then going back down, okay, will be downward rotation. This is a rotation medially and laterally. This is a tilting, okay, so you have an anterior tilt and a, and a posterior tilt in here. You can see the, the picture. Uh, and then this one just uh, defines the muscles, if you like, of motion here, okay. So when you are lifting the arm over your head, the scapula will rotate, and it's by the upper trapezius working in conjunction with the lower trapezius working with the serratus anterior. So these are the three main muscles for rotating the scapula in this plane of motion. If a shoulder was to um, come back down, okay, so downward rotation, 
then it's by the levator scapulae, also by the pectoralis minor, uh, and also by uh, the rhomboids. Okay, so you've got those three muscles that bring it down. Okay, so there's quite a lot to take in, so you might want to go back through that a few times uh, before you do the assessment, and then also before you move on to lesson two. I hope you've enjoyed the first lesson on functional anatomy of a shoulder complex.